What is up, everybody? It's the 72 PC podcast. You know the one. The one where we, we play some games and, and you can play them with us and and you can talk to us and like the chat and we we get off topic for like an hour about something that we can eat instead of talking about video games like we're supposed to. Um, yeah. yeah. How's it going, guys? Sounds about right. It's going. It's going. Trying something new, huh? Yeah. It didn't go very well. Yeah. I'll be honest. No, you can't. It uh. feels weird doing the same the same thing every time. It feels canned a little bit, you know? Oh, cause cause it is to a degree. I mean, we're starting a show at the same time every day or every week. So I mean, there's a degree of canned that I think comes with the territory. Yeah, that's true, I guess. Anyway. No, you're beautiful, Polar. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Always so friendly. So, how's y'all's weeks? Um, well, you know me, so I'm gonna say it's fuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jesus, he's right behind me. <laughs> this is when I have to look at the you gotta look at to the... see. <laughs> oh fuck, yes. I'm just now seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to apologize to the audio listeners. Uh, we, we got Carl behind me. We got Carl from Aqua Teen is, is behind Tom. For the audio listeners, and if you haven't watched the podcast, Tom has a green screen set up every week, so we put uh, an image behind him every week. Uh, usually, it's like a, a background, like a nice, you know, environmental scene from a video game or something like that. And then sometimes it's Carl from Aqua Teen or uh, Bernie Sanders with his mittens on <laughs> or whatever else. <laughs> The cat jamming, you know. I like the jamming cat. Lately, jamming I've been cat. lately I've just been lazy and not like finding, you know, like an image from a game that I know we're going to talk about during the podcast or something. I've just been looking through my pictures folder on my computer every week and just like picking something. You and just had a random some... picture of Carl. Yeah. Why that wouldn't works. I? I've had it. <laughs> I've had it on here for like. I don't know, six years or something. I used to have him as my Steam profile picture a really long time ago, and it's That's still right. on my hard drives. <laughs> I don't so, think I've yeah. had a hard drive for six years. Uh, Ever. I mean, I at some point copied everything from one to another, but... Okay. So you haven't had like a single hard drive. Like I understand. Like, I mean, I have built. I think one of the drives in one of the drives in my computer is pretty old, honestly. Probably close okay. to five or six years old. You guys don't use hard drives. What do you What do you put your operating system on? You guys Flash run on drives. Just just like a standard SanDisk like. Eight gig, <laughs> eight gig memory like an SD, SD card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, you guys are in the the Raspberry Pi life, just using those SD cards. <laughs> I get it. No, I'm using a USB stick. I got I got like 128 gig. Oh yeah, that's more yeah. than yeah. enough. More than enough. I've got an array of floppy so I discs. can fit half of a Warzone on my computer. <laughs> Not even. So, so speaking of, I, I actually have, I've been doing a lot of work and I've got two here, but they're currently powered on and baking, but I've been doing a, a, a lot of, a lot of hard drive work, uh, this week. So got I like that you here. said they were baking because I'm just imagining you putting hard drives in the oven at like, you know, 425 for 20 minutes or until Brown. I mean, yeah. What's your recipe for a seven or 7,200 uh, RPM? So you you got to add monster energy drink. <laughs> you just douse it in monster and it gets faster. Oh. Okay. Yeah, if that you have sense. a red Sharpie, paint some uh, some flame decals on the side of that hard drive and you're done. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Fantastic. It's, so it's kind of like the uh, you put Gatorade on it because electrolytes, duh. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's what plants crave. By the way... I enjoy that movie, and I make references to it from time to time. I don't think I've seen that movie start to finish. I've <laughs> never seen it at all. I've seen it once. Is it good? I, yeah, 
Yeah, I, although, okay. It might have aged poorly. I haven't watched it in a very long time. But as time continues to go on, I'm learning that Idiocracy is not a movie. It is a documentary. documentary yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is a word of caution to the wise. Uh, and I don't know if it will have aged great uh, in the year of our Lord 2021. I don't think it's going to be a movie that ages well, but the premise of the movie, it always hit home with me because my hometown was one of those towns where people got pregnant young and out of wedlock. And I mean, not that, you know, marriage is important for that part, but just in general, mm -hmm. the idea of the movie is like, yeah, okay. I, I grew up with that. I get this. Yeah. I could see this. So let's extrapolate this out to an unreasonable amount and let's look at what the world would be. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I'm afraid that if I watch the movie right now in their in the modern age, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, no, that I don't know why this is a joke. Like, this is just <laughs> honestly, it, it kind of hurts like it's salt in the wound. Yes, I realize I live in the modern era. I get it. I didn't choose to be born in this time. Um, actually has a Gatorade bottle next to his flower next to his desk because that's what yeah. he waters mm -hmm. the flower with every day. <laughs> Wait, you Love mean it. we put toilet water on them? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just oh. so good. But yeah. <laughs> ah, Although I, Man. I, I will say, like, I know we, we don't talk politics here on the 72 Pin Connector podcast. I would vote for Herbert Camacho or whatever the fuck the president's name was. Terry Crews as the president of the United States. <laughs> I would vote the fuck out of that. I'm in. Everyone everyone wants Terry Cruz's. <laughs> I did Terry watch Cruz. something this week. Did you? Yeah. Um, contrary to Tom's advice, uh, Gene and I binged WandaVision in two sittings. Oh. Why would and that it be was contrary quite enjoyable to watching Tom's that advice? Way. He wanted me to watch it, or wanted us to watch it one episode a week. <laughs> You know how like it was anybody being, has that kind of self control. What kind of delusional world do you live in? <laughs> it was released all at the same time. That's how I was able to do it. I got one episode a week. Well, you're not you see, doing it right. That's because you weren't patient enough to be able to enjoy it as a unified experience. Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't just like scarf down the whole thing. I like to taste my food, Irk. <laughs> I like to you eat my food before it gets uh, cold. Chew. You just like unhinge your jaw, shove the entirety of WandaVision in it, and swallowed. I mean, isn't that what you do at like Golden Corral? It's like you just take the plate to your mouth and just like funnel it in. <laughs> yeah, but that's Golden Corral. That's not even technically legally food. So growing up, so like we, we had some um, like ponderosas and stuff around me. So growing up, like I always viewed Golden Corral as a fancy place. Oh no. <laughs> because like it opposite. was more expensive than the places we would go. Yeah. And then as I got older, because we didn't go there often either, because for us it was also like a 40 minute drive to the closest one. And now as an adult, it's like, oh, this isn't fancy. No. This is just like it's a little bit better than food. Ponderosa. <laughs> it's cafeteria food, basically. Ooh. Though it's a Ugh. shame now the Ponderosas are all out. Like I've heard that their actual steaks, if you ordered their steaks, were pretty good. I I can't yeah. verify because I don't think they exist anymore. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. I do gotta say, like I always recognized that Golden Corral was not great food. But where else are you gonna go get a side salad, a plate of nachos? Some uh, some pulled pork, a thing of meatloaf, fried chicken breast, ice cream, and then some cake on the side. So that I'm honest, I'm not like a, I need high quality food, but I will accept lower qualities of food when you give me that kind of diversity. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's like it's fine. like going into like a tiny mom and pop restaurant, and they've got everything from like. Hey, we have burritos, we have tacos, we have euros, we have some Chinese food, and we have some curry on the side. What would you like today? <laughs> like, they have a menu that's 27 pages long, and you know none of it's great. It's barely passable, but goddamn, they have everything. 
Honestly, I would say this for like Golden Corral. And barring someone fucking it up cooking it, I think the flavors in most of their stuff was fine. Like it wasn't great, yeah. but it wasn't bad. I don't think any yeah. of it was bad. Now I've had the chicken wings where they've cooked it for like 20 minutes too long. Nah. Yeah. And then you go to bite and it's nothing but crisp and all the meats all just powder on the inside because it's overcooked. Mm. Make me hungry already. What, talking okay. about overcooked Drug chicken wings? Paint, Dobby, Comrade Bunny. All right. The Golden Corral was right next to the Danbury Dollar Saver, which was right next to the branch of a credit union that I used to go to all the time, which was next to the bowling alley. I don't See, know where Tom, anything is, but I know where like a bunch of places are congregated together. You're talking <laughs> from your area. So Comrade was even more north, so I don't even know if she would go to the same one. But for Dobby and Heroic Saint and I, it was the one at a, um, Huber, like right there okay. at 70, Restaurant yeah. Row. That's where ours was. Oh, the oh, um, uh, Miller Lane. Where they had yes. like the Joe's oh, Crab Shack for a little bit. Dude, Miller Lane, Lane was like the restaurant emporium of this area. It had the best shitty Chinese buffet ever. Like it was Americanized Chinese and it was like low quality, not quite shut down by the health department, but you know they're doing something crazy in back. And it was fucking delicious. We went there all the time. As a matter of fact, last time we went to Ohio, we specifically took a while. Like, uh, we, we left a little bit earlier than we intended. We're like, oh, yeah, no, we, we just want to beat the traffic. Nah, we went to that fucking Chinese buffet. <laughs> nice. I respect it. I'm going so to dish my go to a Chinese uh, buffet. I love understand. a good Chinese buffet. I was just going to say, like, as an adult, there's only two types of buffets I ever go for. And it's Chinese or sushi. Yeah. I, I love me a sushi buffet. But it needs to be a place where I'll eat the sushi without it being a buffet too, though. Like oh, I don't yeah. want yeah, yeah. I don't want gas station style <laughs> Chinese or uh, sushi. Oh man. I don't think anybody wants that. Why do they even have no. sushi? Doesn't I don't know. doesn't make any sense. Desperate. Like I've been hungry at a gas station where I just find something and grab it and eat it. Sushi will never be that thing that I just grab and eat from a gas station. It's like, all right, 7-Eleven hot dogs that are clearly dehydrated, (laughs) and you probably shouldn't be eating them. Fine. Done. Like, chicken sandwiches under a heat lamp? Yeah. Why the fuck not? Dude, tornadoes all day. I want some (laughs) those. You get get three different bags of mini chips and maybe a uh, king-size Reese's. All right. I see what you're doing. It's a travel diet. Travel diet. I like it, but it's fucking true, dude. Yeah. <laughs> when we were driving to Ohio, every gas station was um, energy drink or coffee for caffeine and some form of candy bar. Yep. Candy and then bar, when it was like actually time to eat. Or something like that. Like something. Oh, yeah. And then at that point, I had to kind of force myself to like, yeah, we should probably eat just because like eating those, I will fill up. Or not yeah. get hungry, I should say. But you're going to feel like dog shit <laughs> like in six hours. Awful. Especially because since most of my caffeine wasn't energy or wasn't coffee. It was energy drinks. Yeah. yeah. It's got vitamins, right? A lot of B12. Yeah. yeah. It's healthy. It's got vitamins. Uh, beef jerky. That's something I never buy. I shouldn't say never. I don't buy it often. I love this shit. It's just too expensive for how quick I'll eat it. Yeah, exactly. I, I have, can put away beef jerky real I have some beef jerky bad. right here, literally sitting next to me. Sorry, we're going to get scored on because of this, but it's worth it. What Carnate, brand? It's Private Selection, which is like the Kroger sort of nicer brand. Um, carne Asada, 24-hour marinated beef jerky. Citrus cilantro <laughs> and a jalapeno kick. It is, how is it? very tasty. So how's Different. that bag still there? Because we had the <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to eat it. You have more. I'm not going to. I'm not going to eat it on the on the cast. Nobody wants to hear that. See, so you have more self control than I do. I ate some right before the cast. There are a few pieces left, and I am salivating at the thought. I'm kind of salivating at the thought. Okay, guys, look. <laughs> I just moved from DoorDash to Uber Eats. Oh, and it's, yeah. it's a food topic. So 
DoorDash did not have any of the typical fast food. It seems like DoorDash's range is like really tiny around my apartment. And Uber Eats is like, whatever, man. If you're paying for it, we'll get you something from fucking across the they, state. They, yeah. You don't pay <laughs> fuck. You want to pay us for that? Yeah, sure. You'll pay out the nose, but we'll do it. So like near me, I don't have Wendy's. I don't have Taco Bell. I don't have any of this. So thanks to the pandemic and thanks to us being like real careful about where we're going out because we don't we don't make any unnecessary trips at all. I haven't had Wendy's or Taco Bell in over a year. Oh, my God. And now keep in mind, Taco Bell is my jam. Like it's shitty, but God damn it. I love me some fucking Taco Bell. The Crunchwrap should win the Nobel Peace Prize. It's just, it's a perfect, it's a perfect edible item. It's self-contained. It has meat. It's got vegetables, or if you can call those vegetables, uh, it's just beautiful. It's got a wide range of textures that all work together. There's nothing better on this planet than the Crunchwrap Supreme. So... We joined Uber Eats, and I see it. I see Taco Bell right there. In the past week, we have ordered it three times. <laughs> nice. How, how's your uh, digestive system coping with uh, that? It if you haven't insane. had it for a year, you are not conditioned for it anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, I am not. You have to build up your system for that. <laughs> so Renee was free. She's like, oh, God, this is really going to mess me up. And nah, she's fine. Not me. I am. Um, yeah. Yep. No, I know okay. what I'm doing. <laughs> you just have to build, you have to get your, uh, <laughs> your sea legs back or your Taco Bell sea legs back. Your VR, your Taco you know, Bell and stomach. Bobby, Bobby called out the biggest travesty of it all. You missed the fries again. I You're already gone. Fries again. Okay. You know right, what? I'm I tried those. Back. They were fine, but I don't get the big deal. They're better than any other fast food fry. Now, amazingly enough, I have been fitting into my diet because I've been trying to, you know, diet and lose weight and work out and all that fucking bullshit. Um, but I have managed to actually fit Taco Bell into my diet, which is kind of ridiculous. It also helps that, like, some days I just won't eat a meal in preparation for Taco Bell. <laughs> so this morning I ate nothing. But... Two hours ago, I put away six crunchy taco supreme. Proud of myself. Nice. Have you tried like the uh, the chupadilla? Chup uh, it's the quesadilla chalupa. No, I, I have tried not. that. Where's where's the cheese in it? It's it's solid. It's good. Yeah, I I commend you, Tom, on your ability to plan Taco Bell. Because every time I've had Taco Bell, it was a sudden craving followed by a complete lack of self control. I I identify with that a lot. And I always order too much food for one person. And it's always a problem. <laughs> so I always typically get the same thing. It's like unless I'm unless there's a new item I'm trying. It's like two beef burritos and a uh chicken chipotle melt. Like that so that's my go to. You should try uh, what we've done by making excuses. I mean, plans, not excuses, just straight up plans. Um, we'll say, oh, yeah, wow. Well, you know, delivery fees and all that, like Uber Eats and DoorDash is so expensive. We might as well just order enough to have like some now and some later. Yeah. So we'll just yeah. we'll get two meals a piece and we'll, we'll just put it in the fridge. We'll just put it in the fridge. Sometimes it makes sense. So <laughs> I would rather have Taco Bell sitting out until the next meal than put it in the fridge. Depends on like what if you're is. ordering if you're ordering for lunch, I would leave it out until dinner. Uh, now I would not trust. I don't know. I'm weird about food stuff like that. I I do gotta say like I some items you can do that with a burrito. I will put in the fridge and it's fine. A crunch wrap. I did reheat a crunch wrap the other day. I'm not making that mistake again. My wife is a savage. She will eat crunch wraps cold from the fridge. I don't get it. Soft tacos I that. at room temperature and or cold is actually kind of nice. Soft tacos, yeah. I can see that with. The crunch wrap, though, the lettuce gets weird. Does it? Yeah, I, I forget they put lettuce on that shit. Oh, I guess yeah. it would get like get soggy over time. 
Yeah, like he gets like a little dehydrated or not. I mean, maybe wilty is a better word. Oh, okay. It's kind yeah. of weird. Like unless the lettuce has got that crunch, there's something wrong. True. Okay. Uh, Heroic Saint brought it up. One item, one item only. What's your favorite Taco Bell item? Crunch Wrap Supreme. Does can it be something that's not around anymore? Yeah, yeah. That volcano burrito they had for a while. Oh, that thing oh. was fucking great. Lava sauce was actually really good. It was. Yeah. Um, of cur- current menu though, um, I'm at a toss up between beefy five layer without sour cream or the cheesy gordita crunch. You actually enjoy the beefy five layer? Like, I mean, I, I enjoy it too, but I mean, like, you like top Taco Bell item for you? I mean, it's just a bunch of meat, cheese, and beans. I mean, hmm. that's kind of why there's I'm nothing there. to add about that. <laughs> I, I'm actually with heroic. Like, to me, a ch- the chalupa is the perfect, like, taco ish thing. Like, I love it's got the crunch, it's got some softness to it. Those are just, it's not, not going to break on you. Those are a little too greasy for me. I don't know. Oh, I love it. Calls out the Dorito but tacos yeah. decent. Yeah, the Dorito tacos are actually pretty good. I really I never... So get a cheesy gordita crunch, replace the regular shell with the nacho cheese Dorito shell. And you can thank me later. I never did do the uh, Cool Ranch one. Was that any good? It was okay. The nacho is definitely a better Nacho's fit. better for that, yeah. But it wasn't bad. They had another one for a while too. What was it? There was a third. A, a different Dorito? Oh, was it the original so. Dorito, just like the corn one? No. No, it had the top of the Tio, maybe. Was it? No. I don't think it was the top. I don't of think Tio. it was I would have been all over. That. I don't think it was sweet chili, but I think it was something a little it spicy. Was it the hotter ones. Was yeah. it spicy nacho? It could have been spicy nacho. I gotta say. Well, I- Tapatio Doritos, man. Oh, I need Taco Bell to get on that because fuck, it's so good. Do you know Taco Bell I've makes never had uh, one. like fire, hot fire and mild tortilla chips? Ooh. What? I'm pretty sure they make like fire tortilla chips. I did not realize that. I did not know that. I did know that um, the Flaming Hot Fritos were only made because of Taco Bell. Like they were left in circulation because Taco Bell. Oh. <laughs> like as an item they weren't moving well because it was i mean what that would have been 10 years ago before everyone wanted flaming hot shit Ooh. and i used to get that burrito a lot i was big on the how big of a burrito can i get for how cheap so i was always <laughs> on those like 99 cent burritos that were like yeah. a half pound remember the just the glory the glory days of taco bell where you could get a cheesy double beef burrito for 89 cents. Yes, that sir. That was wild. That is just... You walk in with five bucks and you eat like a god. Dude, you walk in with $3 Dude, you in with and bucks. you have more food than you can eat. It's yes. just what? outlandish. <laughs> I'm glad that existed in my broke college days. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm glad it doesn't because exist now, to be honest. <laughs> huh? I'm kind of glad it doesn't exist now, to be honest. Yeah. Yes. I remember wow. at college I was uh I was really financially strapped for a period of three to four years. Um <laughs> very small amount of time. But anyway, <laughs> uh there for about six months when it when it got really, really bad, um, and I needed to decide between paying rent and paying for food, I would always go and spend three dollars and seven cents. I had it counted out, it was perfect. I got a large coke. I got two McDoubles. Once a day. When they actually were a fucking dollar. Yep. So and they used to let you do a um, double cheeseburger when the double cheeseburgers were on there mm-hmm. and add the Mac sauce for free. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. So it's effectively a dollar Big Mac without the extra bread. And honestly, the double cheeseburger patties are bigger than the Big Mac patties. Yeah, which is stupid, by the way. Yeah, the Big Mac is an awful sandwich. I, I love Big it's Mac, a good but idea, but why? Better. Why would the patty it, be like that? Yes, it tastes great, but their signature sandwich is their worst fucking hamburger patty. Yeah, just it makes no sense. Give me I, a double. Give me, give me a double quarter pounder with cheese with mac sauce. That's what I'm day. thinking. 
<laughs> like that should be the Big Mac. Although, fuck the slivered onions. Give me that dehydrated shit. Because I, I have to say, as a person who hates onions, the dehydrated onions they put on the McDoubles, they're fucking amazing. They're great. They're the only onions I will tolerate. Oh, you like see, the little I'll, tiny... I'll tolerate them. Yeah. Dude, I like Burger King Whoppers because they like cut a slice of an onion and then just put the whole fucking slice there. <laughs> Like, your breath is going to be fucking putrid after. But you know what? That's damn good burger for fast food. Uh, anyway. Wow. We have we've went a half hour. Remember just talking when about I that stuff. completely called it at the beginning of the yeah. cast? <laughs> it's a little well, foreshadowing for you guys. Other food items. We don't really have anything else to talk about. But we should probably fun. transist into... You know, All right. video games. I, I, a little. I bit? played Dota. Uh, uh, maybe we should talk about real. food. I think we should go back to food. <laughs> so anyway, I was playing some Dark Souls last year, and I, I was thinking about it for a while. Fuck off. You know what the Dark Souls of fast food Taco Bell. But no, like honestly, I didn't play anything new. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't either. So like, I I've been on that. Honestly, the Dota grind. Found a. Oh, I don't want to say found it here. I got it here. I'm getting really, really excited with, and that's pretty much it for Dota. Oh, cool. Okay. So uh, yeah, nothing. <laughs> Glad you're enjoying. I, uh, it. That's cool. I played some Beat Saber. Hey, me too. Um, I'm excited for you. So I I finally did it. Um, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, first I'm sorry. Um, second, you probably remember me saying something about Saeed. It is a song in Beat Saber uh, that I have been playing for five months. Five months, have not been able to beat it. So, a couple days ago, I did it. I finally did it. It was the end of the night. I was about to sign off. I'd already gone for an hour. I was exhausted, and I was just, I was ready to call it. We were ordering food. And then Fitz said, but Tom, have you hurt yourself with Saeed yet today? <laughs> and I said, no, I haven't, but it's, I've been going for an hour. Like, there's there's no way I complete it. I'm already exhausted. Yeah, I, I fucking completed it. So, hey, that's awesome. 23 people in the world have completed that song. I landed in number 22. Uh, so I'm not the last person. Uh, nice. Yeah, I'm really, really fucking happy here. Like... God damn. I haven't hit a like a song. In, there are several songs in Beat Saber that I can't beat because they're bullshit. This is one that I knew I could. I knew I possessed the skill. I just needed to put it all together at the right time to make it happen. Uh, and God damn, I did. So not nearly perfect, but I, it, it worked. I got it done. A W is a W. Yeah, yep. for sure. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy I'm, for you. So, what, so what's going to be your next white whale to uh, tackle? There's, there's a couple contenders. Uh, you actually gave me one of the songs. Ooh. Um, I forget which one it was, but it's the one that has the four custom difficulties, and I had to bump it down twice. Oh, oh. Kingslayer. Yeah. yeah, Kingslayer. Yeah. So was, uh, it, was it just hard or was it bullshit? No, no it's, it's just hard. it's hard. It's actually yeah. a really good map. Yeah, I can't. I can't speak for the higher difficulties because I'm not good enough for those. But I I can play it on the lowest difficulty, which, by the way, is like in between so, expert and expert plus, probably difficulty. Agreed. Um, Easy, and that's the lowest. And there's four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did the second one, uh, and it was difficult. The third one I could get with some grinding. The fourth one seems impossible. <laughs> uh, but not like in a bullshit impossible way, like in a I'm not skilled enough for this kind of impossible way. So this song was my Saeed um, for, for the last probably two weeks. Um, so it's like I don't even really love the song that much. Like there are things about the song I actually really don't like at all. Just not my thing. Not that it's bad. But it does have an undeniable energy to it and mm. the map was really good. And the combination of those two things, I was just all in. I wanted to, to beat this song 
on this like lowest hard ass difficulty. <laughs> um, so I was having a really hard time with it. And I was like, it was one of those songs where I'd be out of breath and sweating after it. And then for some reason, like overnight, I just played through it and it wasn't that hard. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> All of a sudden the skill like, was there. Yeah, like I was I was struggling to like I couldn't get through the song. I'd always fail at some point or another. And then I finally got it once, barely, like panting and sweating and like a out of shape person. And then like the next day I do it without struggling and now I can pretty consistently complete it without nice. like I, I don't know what happened it was it was literally overnight i don't understand so I, that I don't is know the one if, thing I, go ahead go ahead i was gonna say that's the one thing i miss about rhythm games is kind of that sense of progression like you can get that in competitive games too to a degree but with rhythm games like there was it's always the same thing Ooh. so you can deliver you can distinctly feel are you better are you not mm -hmm. yeah because it's more measurable yeah and a lot of it, I think, particularly with that song, it's it's pretty physical as far as moving around, but it's not, that wasn't the hurdle. It was really just keeping up and mentally doing it, right? So a lot of that, I think the overnight improvement is really just all the practice you've had in a week and then you sleep on it and that gets committed to memory and then you kind of just kind of get it. It clicks. And I think that's yeah. what happened. Yeah. But, yeah, King Slayer, there's nothing particularly tricky about the map it's just fucking fast and it's fun the movements yeah. are so fun there is one part that's a little i don't want to say tricky but it is a little bit more mind bending than it is just you know fast or whatever and that's Ooh. my favorite part it's so fun it feels really nice when you actually nail it but um yeah it's cool i'm i'm having a good time noticeably getting better at the game that's really satisfying um, that song you showed me was it uh, last night try. or the night before? Yeah. yeah. So Is that the one with the flowers and shit? Yeah. I'm really bittersweet about that because that song made me notice that the Oculus Quest 2 is has some limitations with Beat Saber. Um, so there's a lot of lighting effects and stuff moving around on that map because it's a custom map and it's like really well done and it's almost like like sensory overload at certain it's parts of that song yeah it is and, it, fucking and it's super fast with like wide sweeping movements and things and i actually could notice the latency on that map and it was it was a pain like it was not running well I had to turn off some of the lighting effects and stuff, and it was still having a hard time. Because mm. the Quest 2, if you're playing the Steam version of Beat Saber, even if you plug in with the USB cable, it's still encoding the video to send through the cable, right? So, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's something to do with the encoding or, or what it is. I, I'm going to mess with it a little bit because when I play wirelessly, I can choose the bit rate and stuff for the encoding. So I'm wondering if I lower that, it might look a little worse, but it will be well, much more responsive. Smooth. Yeah. So I'm a little worried that I'm getting better at Beat Saber enough that I can tell that there's latency, and that's kind of bugging me too. Oh, no. Like just a little bit. Like it's not a lot, but I think on some of the really hard, like difficult songs with a lot of quick, wide movements... I, I do notice that sometimes I'm not sure if I missed or if it just didn't register. Ooh. And I, and I err, I try to err on the side of, I probably just missed, but it's, it's, it's questioning. It's, um, it's iffy enough that I'm questioning, questioning it. Yeah. And that sucks. Like it, it's one thing to know, like, man, I, I, I missed it. It's another thing to think, man, I kind of got screwed out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just moved my Beat Saber install to my slow spinning hard drive uh, because my M2 drive is taking a shit. I'm hoping that fixes my stuttering, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. Can also, I have, new M2? Yeah, I've already got one. It's sitting on the shelf. I just I'm I've had enough like 
tech migration nonsense going on recently that I haven't had time to take apart my PC and swap the drives. Like, it's, it's literally Fair. sitting right there, but I, I've got, like, these hard drives baking, I've got a new backup system, and I'm migrating some other tech stack stuff to a new platform. I'm like, there's, there's a whole lot to do, and it's basically my entire weekend. Fun. Yeah, it's a good time. So uh, yeah. is this, is this going to turn into uh, Adam decides to go full pro at Beat Saber? He's like, well, I can't just get the index because you see that's <laughs> still consumer grade VR. I'm going to need the, the same tracking apps that NASA uses for the rover. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. You know, good, good tools make good gaming. <laughs> I mean, if you say that, where the fuck was the HoloLens gaming? Because that tool was fucking awesome. But it was uh, never really commercial grade. It wasn't really even consumer grade. That's what I meant. I had a um, I had a uh, guy I used to work with who um got in on it mm. and was doing stuff. He's like, it was really cool. He's like, I was fixing my washing machine with this on my head with a picture of the schematic right there, <laughs> overlaying what I'm looking at. I'm like, yeah, I could see where that'd be useful. Not like twenty five hundred dollars useful, but I could see yeah. it being useful. <laughs> I mean, I did the same did shit with Google Glass. I thought didn't you get that at a conference, or is that I one did. you actually had to buy? Well, okay, I got pre ordered it at the con I at the conference. Pre order for free okay. at the conference. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, the device was a thousand bucks. Oof. Yeah. It was cool though. Like it was a it really was cool device. Cool. I enjoyed the hell out of it. It's way I've got pictures. too expensive for a beta, but I've got pictures in my Google Photos of you coming to Columbus and everyone just wearing that shit, yeah. trying it out. <laughs> so I think everyone, like, I still know people are like, "Oh, see the dude with Google Glass." <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's me. Yeah, I'm it was it was fun. Um. Yeah, Beat Saber. Uh, so, I did do uh, a little bit of King Street, uh, King Spray Graffiti. So I was playing this. Uh, I'm still, I'm not an artsy individual. I honestly suck at almost everything art related. Um, but uh, it's kind of a vibe. I put on some chill music last night. I, uh, I stood around on my, my virtual street corner with a, a real life beer. And I just fucking spray painted shit, vibing out to music. <laughs> like, I'm not good. I'm not producing anything of actual value. Like, I made a cube and I try to clean up the lines. But, uh, like, that's that's as far as I've gotten in, in my graffiti. But that said, I mean, it was really fun. The value is intrinsic, and the fact that you were enjoying it brings it value. Yeah. Like, I I was vibing out. It's cool. So if if you have VR, if you're looking for a more chill game to... Like, just put on music and dick around to. Um, Trout, King Spray Graffiti. It's really cool. And it's actually accurate enough that, like, professional graffiti artists are now using it to oh. practice and plan out their uh, their actual physical tags. Oh, that's that's cool. pretty neat, yeah. Yeah, um, like, there, there was one guy on YouTube, and he was trying out... Like a technique that he uses in real life, he's like, "Oh, well, let me let me just like dodge this thing here." Oh my god, it worked! Because he <laughs> like it took over, right? He's using the index, he's got the finger tracking. He's just like, "All right," and he's doing this thing. He's like, "Holy shit, that actually works in here!" I do this trick in real life. I didn't think it actually worked in here. Like you have to program this thing to work that way. Uh, well, so if yeah. you model the physics, I mean, the game doesn't have much going on. Yeah. So if they model the physics properly, I mean, it's just a. It comes down to, can you move it the way you would in real life? Yeah. And it turns out, yeah, they can. The guy actually, after he tried this game out, because I think it was like on IGN, they do this like professional plays, whatever in VR. Like they had a professional boxer play Creed and they got knocked out in the first couple, uh, first couple fights. Like, okay, probably not the best analog there. Um, but they had a professional graffiti artist, Trout King Spray. And yeah, it was, it was good enough that, they actually started a YouTube channel showing different techniques and teaching people how to make really cool sprays. That's cool. So, um, like it. you're digging that. Did you ever do tilt brush? Yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of tilt brush. 
again, I wasn't any good at it, but I had fun with it. So Tilt Brush was the Google 3D. Think of like Windows Paint in 3D space in VR yeah. made by Google. Like the old Windows Paint with like all the different tools that the old Windows Paint used to have. Wow, dating myself. But anyway, <laughs> um, I did actually play one new game. I forgot about this. Oh. It's a new old game. I played it before. New old game. My sister recently picked up a Switch. And um, so my nephew's getting into games and stuff. So they picked up Mario Party. And then we decided, hey, let's play together. So we did some Mario Party online with each other. Mario Party. Like... 30, 40, maybe even 50 mini games. There's a lot of mini games at Mario Party. It's enjoyable. However, doing the online play, you have seven to choose from. What? Yeah. I was a little disappointed with that. I'm like, come on. You have all this stuff. They don't even let you play the board game version together. You just have to do like this mini game thing where you choose five of the seven or eight mini games that are there and play against each other in them. Seriously? Yes. What the it is the. Is it is the worst implementation of something like that I've ever seen. That said, I think if you have two switches together, you can play full like the normal game. But they don't let you do it online, which is super frustrating because that would have been super nice. Like we were on speakerphone just talking while we were playing. It'd been nice to actually be able to do all the different mini games. Yeah. And the mini games they had on there were really like pretty lame for what they were. It was stuff like, hey, run your person under the popcorn to catch the popcorn. And, hey, you're going to have to just pump this up and down to pump the water to water the flower. So it's like, ah. But I think we did that, that. Like, Mario Party was one of the things that Nintendo just shipped and then completely dropped support for. Like, with all their other games, there's some amount of, like, DLC or add-ons or updates or something. Mario Party, they just shit out and left it on the floor. It's a shame because they're... Um, granted, I was out of Mario Parties for a uh, few iterations, but they had this free flow where it's like an open grid board and you got to move wherever you wanted as a team, like 2v2 style. And it was a lot of fucking fun. Like, Mario Party is designed for this era of gaming. Because it's yeah. so easy to add shit to. Just add new fucking mini games. You you win. Yeah. <laughs> it is game as, as a service before that was a thing. Like it was set up for it. And then they just didn't. Meanwhile, they're adding more and more fighters to Smash Brothers. Yeah. They can't add another fucking mini game or let you play mini games online. Fucking Nintendo. Agreed. Oh. So, speaking of fucking Nintendo, I've been playing two fucking Nintendo games. Uh, first is Metroid Zero Mission, and that's all well and good. But the other is a game that has uh, has never, and I, I can't say will never, but possibly never, uh, will come out in this country. Mother 3, or the sequel to mm. Earthbound. So, way back in the day, because whenever somebody cool, or whenever... Somebody cool makes something cool about something cool that Nintendo has put out, which is cool. I ha cool. I instantly download it because Nintendo is really fucking litigious. Like if you draw Mario on a piece of paper and you don't get that shit like signed off on by Nintendo, they'll take your goddamn house. I wish I was joking. Like Nintendo is super fucking litigious about bullshit. So somebody came out with a Mother 3 fan translation. Like, people had worked on this forever. So I instantly downloaded it, patched the, the Japanese ROM, and now I've got an English version of Mother 3. I've been playing it, and it's excellent. It's fantastic. The humor carries over well. Like, the game is just wonderful. It's an RPG, but without, like, all the JRPG baggage. Don't get me wrong. I love a good JRPG, but frankly, there's a lot of... A lot of filler and just kind of bullshit because it, it's a JRPG and you got to have cliche bullshit in it. Oh, it's a funny animal character that talks and is going to get the party into trouble. Oh, no. <laughs> like the standard JRPG tropes. Uh, Mother 3 doesn't really have a ton of those because it's designed to be a really unique experience. Like it's its own fucking world. And it's great. I'm really, really digging it. I've only put in a couple hours so far, but fuck, it's a lot of fun. Everything from the music to just the, the humor in the game, it's goddamn hilarious in parts. 
Um, yeah, it's it's wonderful. So Mother Three. Very nice. Very so nice. there's a game I want you to speak to because I watched you play it and it looked. Re- oh, there's two I want you to speak to, but first you played a game that was absolutely ridiculous. I watched you playing this last night. I was about to get in VR until I watched you playing this. I'm like, nope, I'm done. Uh, Fucking Gorilla Tag. Oh, Gorilla Tag. All right, so first of all, I've got to mention that uh, my gorilla's name uh, is by GME. So if if you're part of the the GameStop stock apes, um, yeah, that's that's the name of my gorilla. Um, You are a gorilla in VR with no legs. You have arms, so big, beefy monkey arms. And your job is to slap the ground, and everything is fully physically simulated, but you slap the ground to propel your little gorilla body all around this arena. And that's that's what you got to do. You, you play tag. That's, that's it, it reminded tag. me of Get Over It. Oh, getting over it. A little it. more. Yeah. Yeah. Like in the way that you used your arms to project yourself. Like I watched Tom for five minutes try to get up this little hole where he had to jump up. <laughs> like it's, it looks like it would just be frustrating to do certain things. It's so much fun. It's so fucking stupid. So I was trying to get away from this guy and I'm freaking out and I'm trying to run with my stupid monkey hands and it's just not <laughs> working. So out of sheer fear and frustration, I pound the ground and I fly straight up into the air and he can't get me because I've, I've hit some ledge or something. And that's the game. You can use your stupid monkey arms to like smack walls and angle yourself in different directions. And the whole game has got like this, this PS one, like stretched out texture kind of aesthetic. It works really well. It's super performant and God damn, it's just a lot of fun. It is stupid, stupid fun. Um, I will warn you, if you do not have your VRC legs, be careful with this one because uh, accessibility is not a thing in Gorilla Tag. It's a free game about monkey. Like, (laughs) they're not going to make any concessions for you. You will be free falling from times and free falling in VR is sickening if you're not ready for it. It it ain't great. Uh, So yeah, if you do have your VRC legs though, Try Gorilla Tag. It is an ungodly amount of just stupid fun. Um, it's loud as hell, though. Like, it's open voice chat by default, and because it's free to play, a million and a half kids are on this game. So I remember the early VR days when it was a bunch of neckbeards, and that was yeah. all. It was just us. Yeah. But now <laughs> the kids yeah. are here. Now the Oculus, Go, or the Oculus uh, Quest 2 came out. So I, I yeah. blame I blame the quest. I mean, let's be honest, it was there before. Yeah. But anyway, you, you had one other VR game that I will probably actually be buying. So Hyperdash uh is a new VR shooter, um, also available for the quest. Um, why did I score that? That was weird. Nice anyway, shot, Tom. Um it's, I, I want to say, Hyperdash's early access. Um, you have a combination of, like, active movement and teleport and a dash. So you can do everything from rail grinding to jumping behind people and shooting them with a shotgun, which was super fun last night. People fucking hated me for that. <laughs> I'd walk up, they'd be shooting, they're taking cover, we're squaring off, and then I appear behind them and... I say the like stupid cliche anime, nothing personal kid, and I shoot him <laughs> back. Uh, it's it's great. Um, but uh, I played a couple different game modes. Um, I really liked payload. So you have to stand on top of like a cart, push it to a destination while other people try to defend. We got down to like 30 seconds before the match ended, we had to all really coordinate, and I ended up winning the game for people because I snuck around and then jumped on it while everybody was concentrating on the uh, the fire happening in front of them. It was it was fucking great. Uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I didn't put any more than an hour into it, but I'm really liking the game. It's definitely more of an arcade quake ish, doom ish style shooter, not like Pavlov. Definitely not like Onward. Um, like it's, it's fun and fast and sci-fi. So if you're looking for a fast paced, quick, like VR game, 
Uh, yeah, Hyper Dash, that'll do it for you. It's visually very crisp, too. Like, yeah. I think it looks great visually. There's not a whole lot of bullshit to it. Like, Nintendo with the Switch really got me to realize that I actually value crisp, clean over having, like, shit everywhere. Yeah. Like, make it minimalist and just really clean. Yeah. And that's what they did. Uh, Very cool. Well, Tom, I have a question. I mean, I've talked... Huh? Ah. Um, Death Stranding. Did you... Dorth Stranding? Doth Stranding. Oh. Did you jump back in? You've or got the what's, first training type game on there. I didn't realize it. I do. Well, okay. Technically, Mario 64 is the first strand type game. This is the second. So sure. anyway, I was playing the second strand type game, Dorth Stranding, um, because I was sitting here. I was a little tired, but not like tired enough to go to bed, like tired enough that I don't really want to get into like Pavlov and... I didn't want to play anything super active, but I wanted to play something. And I figured, ah, I'll just roam around and vibe out and listen to music and uh, go on a hike. I'll play a walking simulator. Uh, so I fired up Death Stranding again. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with that game. Uh, so the story is still inane as ever. And I have <laughs> to say, this is so weird to say about a Kojima game, but my least favorite part the part of the game that i absolutely hate the most is every time people are talking <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like die hardman's like oh we gotta do this thing and we gotta save america and then dead man is like oh but you're bb and then the bts and then the bds and then the and like i don't give a fuck i want to look at like cool clearly icelandic uh you know mountain ranges and and deliver goddamn packages while while running running away from ghosties like that is what i came here to do stop talking to me i don't care about your story or the baby or anything i just want to go on a nice hike uh so after i got through the inane number of cutscenes, where literally the cutscene could be 30 seconds long where they say one sentence but they say the same thing like five yeah. fucking times they do repeat themselves a lot cutscene. oh my god it's like well, you see, your BB is actually uh, taken from the still mother, and that allows you to see BTs. And then Norman Reedus is like, oh, the still mother? You mean the mother that's still, that's dead? <laughs> and you took her baby that wasn't born because it's dead? Yes, we take the brother, the, the brother, the baby from the mother that's dead to give us a connection between the dead and the living. And that's why you can see the ghost, because the mother is dead with the baby that we put in the jar that allows you to see the ghost because it's mother's dead. <laughs> that would be a I definitely got that, that feeling too. It was, ah, uh, it's the most, uh, it's like the most exposition that you can have. It was still mean, not really thing. grasping it. <laughs> what the fuck is a BT? What the fuck is a bridge baby? What the fuck is the bridge? Is it just a baby that's on the bridge? <laughs> Where do they get the still mothers? Do you just find a new mom Doesn't and just shoot her or something? Like, None of it matters. <laughs> like Easy. all of the all the questions around. Okay, here is here's why this thing works. Okay, but why does it work that way? And literally, the characters are like, oh, well, it's part of the old data that we don't have access to anymore because you know the internet broke, and that's why you're here to get everybody on the internet again because you're the guy with the the VPN keys. You got to hook everybody's routers together. It's like, um, okay, but why? And their answer for why is literally, oh, well, we don't know that. That's part of the old data. <laughs> There's still a lot we don't understand about BBs. You know, Sam, Sam Porter Bridges. I, okay. Why are you called yeah. Dead Man? No one knows, dude. I'm sorry, but I mean, I agree. I don't care about the story at all. I do get some enjoyment out of the just campiness of it oh my and god it's so fucking campy. i absolutely love the character name die hardman that's the best <laughs> thing that's ever happened but um but yeah the game but the game is good i was a joke at first <laughs> yeah i know i did too die hardman um but but i agree though with you the game itself is good the systems are interesting and traversing the beautiful 
beautiful scenery is fun and engaging enough. Oh my god! Have it's, either it's, of it's you just, got? It's just as much chill and strategic, and maybe a little tedious. But if you, if you're in the right mood for that kind of thing, the game really has a lot to offer. I think, depending on your taste, obviously. But have I've either been, of you beat it? No, no. I've been yeah. really wanting to. I really want to dive back into it. I just haven't yet. One of those um, so, Tom, you were recently in it. Um, yeah. To me, the coolest part of this game, I mean, I didn't play it, but, like, the coolest part, like, theoretically, was the social end of this game, how people do this and that, and it alters the world for everyone. Is that still taking place? Yeah. Or is it stale? Okay. Yeah, so, um, and and here's, here's the thing. I was actually worried about this, because, so, Dark Souls... I'm. I promise. I'm going somewhere with this. Don't hear. I, hear I, I know where you're going, so it's okay. fine. So, Dark Souls does have that kind of living world thing with you know invading people. Um, and the best time to play a Dark Souls game is before everybody figures out everything and ruins the experience by just fucking griefing you. Because every time, if you play Dark Souls online at any time a year after it comes out, you're just getting ganked. Like the first area in the game is the hardest because. People go there and they camp out and they just slaughter noobs all day. Welcome to Dark Souls. Um, so I was I was afraid that Death Stranding would hit some of that. Like, oh, hey, I fired up Death Stranding. I haven't played it since it came out. Everybody's just going to have fucking bridges and there's just going to be like a goddamn teleporter. Like, oh, gonna... Sam, thanks for, thanks for walking into this teleporter yeah. to make this delivery. You didn't have to. Like, it's no, it's no longer a walking go. simulator. It's literally just Euro Truck Simulator. Yeah. And I, I was worried that that's kind of what would happen, but they did something kind of clever to use other players' structures. The uh, the place you're going to has to be connected to the chiral network. How you connect to the chiral network is you have to make a delivery yourself alone without other players helping you initially. So until you've completed that one quest, the, the main thing you're, you're trying to do, you can't use other player structures. Now, when it comes to, like, the side content, sure. If somebody built a bridge and you've already connected to, to the network, yeah, you're good. You're, you're totally fine to use that stuff. But initially, you have to make that trek on your own and actually complete the game as it was intended to be completed. I do like that. Yeah, I I just didn't know if... Like, if enough so people I, were, would, were to be playing for that to still be active enough. Yes, and I think, like, correct me if I'm wrong, because once again, we all know I'm not a Dark Souls guy. I think there was a degree of that multiplayer stuff that they put into the single player game is like the, they already programmed some degree of it. Yeah, like, so there are, yeah, there are, there are some that will, like, you will see, like, a name of a common NPC. Oh, look, they started this bridge, but they didn't finish it, sort of thing. And okay. they do that as kind of an onboarding, like, tutorialization of, oh, yeah, I just didn't have the metal, but I put this thing down here. Sam, could you go finish this thing for me? And one of your missions will be, hey, truck all this fucking heavy metal all the way over there across this river and finish building this bridge so you can walk across it easier. And then your next mission will be, oh, hey, Sam, remember that bridge you just put? Yeah, the place on the other side of that bridge is actually where you need to go. So it's a good thing you built that bridge, huh? Like is why you want to do that exactly like it's it's pretty cool um it's not the best thing in the world but i will say when it comes to tutorializing people even after they spent a long time away from the game they do a really good job they actually do a way better job than yakuza kiwami 2 which i also played a little bit of so i fired up japan simulator uh walked up to the first npc i saw and he's like Hey, you ready? I'm like, yeah, let's go. And apparently the, yeah, let's go, I'm ready, was we're going to go to this base and then there's going to be 100 people and we got to kill them all and there's a boss fight. And by the way, you're level two and you shouldn't have told me yes. Um, <laughs> and the game didn't re-tutorialize me at all. I, I really, like, I read something on Twitter today where someone says, when I'm president of video games, I'm going to make every game require a... I'm a busy adult with a life feature where it retutorializes you and tells you what the fuck is going on. So you can just jump back into it. This game didn't do any of that. So I have no idea what's going on. I don't even know who these people are. I'm just punching. And I'm like, oh, wow. 
I can pick up furniture and beat people to death with it. I didn't know I could do that. The game told me about that like a year ago. I forgot. But uh, I got to this boss and I played it like four times and I'm doing like fucking chip damage to his health. And he's slapping the shit out of me. After the fourth time, I, I gave up on the game. I'll go back to it, but I'm probably going to have to just restart from the beginning to figure out how to play or watch mm. a YouTube video on how to play. That is some yeah. of the most disheartening stuff, especially if you get pretty deep uh, into a game and then you're like right before a boss or something. It's like, well, I'll never be able to continue this save again because I came in six months later because shit got busy. Exactly. I really, really wish that games would give you the ability to like retutorialize yourself easily without having to restart. Um, and, and some games do that really, really well, right? Like Death Stranding, most of the time, has got button prompts everywhere. If you've already played the game, if you know what you're doing, you're just ignoring the button prompts, right? Cyberpunk does the same exact thing. But when I reinstalled Cyberpunk recently, I pulled out something and said, oh, no, no, you got to use this button to close it. I'm like, oh, that's right. You're fucking stupid. That's why I got to do it that way. <laughs> but it gave me the prompts on the side. And after I remembered it, I like they were there, but I never looked at them again. They never registered in my mind. But when I needed them, they were right there, a glance away. I need those prompts because I'm the impatient ass that clicks through shit and doesn't realize he missed his or you yep. missed like you can do this. Yeah. So I'll play through 20 hours of a game playing it one way. <laughs> Someone will see and be like, dude, why aren't you just doing this? I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? I've been doing it for 20 hours. I could have just hit Y instead of going to the start menu, down to options, uh, down to this, over to that. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, I do got to say Death Stranding made it real easy to get back into things, which was super that, appreciated. I'm glad you said that because that was sort of one of my... I, I don't want to say it's why I haven't picked it back up, but it was one of my kind of... I don't know, apprehensions, because there are a lot of systems in Death Stranding. Systems on top of systems on top of systems, and a lot of things to keep track of and to do. And I was worried that oh, I just wouldn't be able to jump back in very worry. easily. Die Hardman will tell you at least seven times exactly. <laughs> <what>. <laughs> oh, I don't care about the story, um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I don't start like big, long games a lot. Uh, and a, a great example of this is fucking Tarkov. I was watching uh, Pestily play Tarkov. I'm like, man, that sounds really fun. And I actually, like, I updated and I sat there. I'm like, oh, I should I should play. All right, but then I'm going to have to, like, re-memorize all those key binds. And then I got to gotta set up the base. And then I got to do all those quests. And then... So what I'm about to say about Tarkov might sound daunting. But if you were to main it for just even a week... Remembering key bindings and how stuff works won't be much of an issue because it's really not that much. Yeah. Now you'll never be set like I am more set right now than I've ever been. So like unless you grind, you don't get to those points, but you'll be able to just pick it up and play. Yeah. You might not have the best ammo, best guns, but like you won't be trying to remember how to play. Yeah, that's fine. Honestly, half the reason I don't start kind of big giant games like Near Automata is it's a perfect example here, right? Like Tarkov, probably a bad example of this, but Near Automata, right? I got yeah, like four, four hours into that and I haven't played it since. I don't really want to go through all the beginning stuff and be bored, but I also don't want to not know how to play. So what do? What I do? need that I'm a busy adult with a life function. I need you to dedicate a week and play that game. Because yeah. that that that's a game where you can't take a break in the middle of it. Like I understand you might get busy, it might take you two weeks, but that's not a game where you can put it down for six months. And I'm not just talking because you might not remember how to play. Because like there's spots where like knowing what's going on is super important. They won't retell you in that story. Like you just want to consume it at once. I don't think it hits the same if you do half the game once and then half a game later. Yeah, I don't think it'll hit the same. Because fuck, man, I don't care about stories. That game fucking hit hard. That was such a good game. Such a good game. Anyway, that's why um, I'll never probably play it. I can't. It's not. Really I can't that stick long it. I can't though. stick it through twenty-three endings. <laughs> well, no, no. Okay, so 
I'm and I know not story. all of them are It'll the full game through. I know die. that, but still. You will unlock an ending if you die. I know. It's. I know it's, it's Stanley a... Parable esque with the endings, but. I not can't. that that's not even accurate really i mean it is but it's not um i can't say too much right now because to explain it would ruin a part of it but 20 hours i think is probably about what it would take to finish it so i mean it's not with, really like with an incredibly long game yes like with the ones that made it good to you yes yes you can mainline it and probably like, I mean, you can still do some side stuff, but like 20, maybe 30 hours. Like it's not, it's not a short game, but it's not a long game. Everyone talks about these endings and everyone who plays it talks about the endings because it's a cool concept, but it also scares people away. It's not, it's not like a, you have to do it all. There, there's sequentialness to the game. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, Dobby. He spent 34 hours, and he's like a 100 percenter, and he put 34 hours into it. So it's not like an incredibly long game. That's not terrible. It's not terrible at all. Yeah, like this isn't a Final Fantasy. Like, it's nothing like that, time-wise. I, um, also, I also have the attention span of, like, a turtle <laughs> or a small I, you crustacean. You should have the attention, the attention <laughs> of a monkey and get gorilla attack and play with me. <laughs> Monkey. Uh, monkey. Oh, Monke. also, in Gorilla Tag, I was looking for, like, a main menu or a way to change my name, or, like, I know some people had hats or different colored gorillas. Um, this was cool. How many people were Harambe, by the way? Uh, I didn't actually see any Harambe's last wow. night. Yeah, I know. That's a missed opportunity. <laughs> I guess it's kind of an old meme at this point. Still, though. So, uh, no, no, Harambe dying is why we got 2020. If that gorilla would have fucking lived, we wouldn't be in this mess right now. Goddamn butterfly effects and all that shit. But anyway, anyway. Um, so, yes, I was looking for a start menu in Gorilla Tech. I completely lost it. Thanks, Harambe. Uh -huh. um, anyway. So I, I get to a tree and like I climb up and I have to make a jump and like the game doesn't even give you like a level select. Like they, when you jump in the game, it's a tutorialized section of, Hey, you got to climb up here. I don't care how you do it, but you got to get up here to get to the main area of the game. It's like, you have to pass the tutorial and figure out how to move before you're allowed to do anything, uh, which is kind of cool. But uh, I got into this tree and there's a fucking computer and I've got like monkey fingers and you can like type and use commands on this computer to change your name and color scheme. And there's a button where you and your friends have to like stand by the computer all at the same time and hit the button at the same time to load into a new server. And it's all based on timing. So if you all hit it kind of around the same time, you should land in the same place. Um, like it's fucking ridiculous and just weird as shit. Like, the I, weirdest shit ever. I thought that was really fucking cool. It was... Like, when you awesome. discovered that, I was like, no shit. Because, like, from us, we just see everyone hovering around this single computer. <laughs> and then, really like, cool. as, as I'm hovering, like, my monkey starts changing colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's me, uh, like, well. scrolling through the, the color wheel. Like, ah, I want... Six blue and six green and zero red. I'm going to be a teal monkey. A teal boy. Okay, so um, you haven't talked to this game yet, and Josh is asking if you have. So, <laughs> uh, what is PUBG uh, Destruction Derby? <laughs> we, found, we found four cars, and we had four oh, people. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> So I like this, but oh no. Last for a little bit, but yeah, yeah, there's there's a little bit of destruction derby action happening. Uh were you just trying to run over all the other people? We were just honking like fucking madmen. <laughs> <laughs> driving all over the goddamn island. Uh it was it was beautiful and stupid in so many ways. Like I think <laughs> I think PUBG and frankly, I think most battle royales 
could be a lot better if you stop tryharding. Like, there's there's a time and a place for getting sweaty, mm-hmm. but when you're chilling with the boys, like, feel free to have those good, tight comms, but, like, if you see four trucks, what are you going to do? Are you going to be like, well, no, because the trucks are loud, and we got to get those Ws, and now nah, I'm working on my battle pass. Nah, everybody hop in a truck, fire wildly into the air, and uh, <laughs> run some motherfuckers over. Okay. Um, Josh is breaking down a story that I think you're going to have to narrate, Tom. Oh, my God. <laughs> so um, I think this is playing to a specific scenario where maybe Demo Derby was happening. <laughs> uh, so not, not entirely. So if I remember this correctly, we we found three cars, and then we found a fourth car, and Jacob's like, oh, cool, you guys got a fourth car. And we're like, What? that's not ours. And then he explodes like after what sounded like seven grenades exploded on him, <laughs> killing his car instantly. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. So uh, always keep track of the amount of cars you have. Otherwise <laughs> you will die. Uh, PUBG. PUBG is a fun game. It, it plays fun. well. I mean, it, it was, it's got, it's, it's got, it's a little bit of jank around it and it's kind of its charm at this point. I like how they pivoted. When they first started this game, like, I don't want to say realistic, but like it was, it was a rough game and everything was like gritty, um, like seriousness. And then man, after like season two or three, they started bringing in like Fortnite esque kind of outfits and they just stopped <laughs> caring. Like they didn't want to have this, like we're badass views. Like, fuck it. We're just having fun. Yeah. It just feels like the entire swing of PUBG is went from try hardy to fun. Just yeah. from cosmetic sense. Other than the cheaters who are, well, I guess they're not trying hard, oh. but they're trying to win with with everything they can. They're, they're the being dirtbags. Yeah. I would like to play again, though. That was fun last week. Surprising are we... because I, I had a love-hate thing with PUBG when, it, when we were playing it a lot. So we, we did have issues with a cheater where... Uh where somebody was like, we were on top of the hill. Like there's this big hill. They were down at the bottom. They're pushing high ground, which you don't do. Have you ever fucking seen star Wars? Anyway, we're on the other <laughs> side, but literally hiding back. There's no line of sight. And this guy, this motherfucker is like zeroed in. You can see like on the death cam where Josh's name tag is. He's like right there as he's cresting the hill. And like Josh is running around. The guy's like, so as soon as he crests the hill, bang, bang. And then, the aim instantly snaps to the other one, bang, and then the in- aim instantly snaps to the next guy, bang, and then after they get the W, he like instantly like aim snaps to his teammates and kills them. Like not like I'm zeroing in and this is a good shot. Like you can see like the shake and snap. Like it's it's a bot. It's yeah. just a fucking bot. Yeah, yeah fuck those people. Fucking aim botters, man. They're the worst. But no, part of the love hate that I think a lot of us had initially with PUBG. I don't know if this is also why you had the love hate Adam, but the long time spent without action and sudden death. Yeah. But now in hindsight, like you have a lot of downtime where you're just running, where you can just chill and just talk and hang out. Yeah. That's, that's exactly the, the appeal. I think the good down, downtime, chill time. And I've played so much Tarkov. I'm kind of used to just, spending a lot of time doing something and then just getting killed and it all being for nothing. So yes, <laughs> I'm a little desensitized to that. <laughs> a, a little less tar- so in Tarkov though, because there is still progression you can make, even if you die like that. Whereas in PUBG, it's literally just, that is the end of it completely start over. Yeah. And that's where like Tarkov isn't a battle Royale by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. But as far as genres go, that's still about as close as of a genre as we have. Yeah. To describe yeah. what it is. It's got the pacing kind of of a battle royale. Tarkov is so weird. Also, by the way, it doesn't seem like it, but Tarkov is another one of those games that's fun to play kind of like you did with the Destruction Derby. Just like put on a meme kit or some ridiculous guns with like six flashlights on them or whatever <laughs> and just goof around. Like as long as you have the a little bit of economy in the game to support that, that can be tons of fun. I remember at the very end yeah. of the last wipe cycle or the two before, I think, I just went in to factory the smallest map with a backpack and one of the biggest rigs 
completely full of grenades. <laughs> and I was just like, just tossing them, tossing them, tossing them, tossing them, tossing them. <laughs> and I didn't kill anybody, but it was fun. It was ridiculous. But you know, there's that one guy in there that, that doesn't understand the wipe. He doesn't understand the the memory. He's just like, let's go. Oh, God. Oh, shit. Motherfucker. All these yeah. grenades. Where? How many people are here? Yeah. I've also heard of people oh, doing. Um, there's a gun called the PPSH, which is like a World War II style. It's almost like a Tommy gun sort of thing. It just like shoots super fast with like kind of bad ammo. Um, and I've heard of people going in with like five people all rocking that thing and just like all honing in on one guy at the same time, just firing, <laughs> squatting him. <laughs> just, I think I've heard that if you get five of those guns and all shoot them at the same time, it like lags the server out a little bit. Jesus Christ. I mean, that gun fires really quick for as mm-hmm. cheap of a gun as that is. Yeah. But yeah, a little stuff like that is fun. I-, I love games that you can take super seriously, but also you can just do something ridiculous and have fun with it. I enjoy yeah, like, that. And it doesn't even have to cost much to do it. And also, the nice thing about Tarkov that doesn't get talked about much is like, Tom, if you were to play with us, we could bring you in an entire kit and drop it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I hate doing that, though. Like, I know you guys can, but I always feel like the, the freeloader, like, <laughs> hey, uh... Hey, we're collecting money for pizza, guys. What what do you want? And I, I'm like, oh no, no thanks, guys. I had a big breakfast. I'm not hungry. And then the pizza arrives, and I take like four fucking slices. Like, I don't want to be that motherfucker. <laughs> like, let me contribute. The difference, you. It, the difference it, is it, like we put this. the time to do it, and we'd yeah. rather play with you than not. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, no, guys, that's... I had a big I had a big breakfast. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna kid up. I'm good. Oh, hey, can we get a yeah. gun and some ammo in a thick case? <laughs> I got my thick case today. Nice. Words. I will never have. I shouldn't say that. I probably won't have one for another. You don't play enough wipes. to get to level thirty-five. Yeah. Hey, who knows? I can buy one. They're only twenty-five mil. <laughs> I keep can, it this pace. I'll have that in a few weeks. Is there a way that I can transfer like real life bitcoins into Tarkov? No. Like, uh, no, but if it was the other way around, I'd be retiring. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, just wondering. So I think the Bitcoin also, in Tarkov is supposed to be like 150k, maybe 200k. Uh, it was 850k today because of the <laughs> the IRL Bitcoin prices. Jesus. So, yeah, dude, it's it's getting nuts. Like my economy is crazy because of that. Yeah, same. Uh, I'm trying to look for any any games that I missed. Um, nope. I played I played Loop Hero. Hey, what'd you think? I like that, um, I like it. Uh, calling it a dungeon master simulator is possibly the most accurate thing I've heard about that game. I've only put like maybe an hour and a half into it, so I'm not super far. Um, but I like it. It's I am not a huge fan of idle games. Like I will I'll f- play them in fits and spurts, but I'm not really into it. But Loop Hero has enough that I can't really call it an idle game necessarily, but it's got the exactly. same vibes to me. Like I can I can be playing like Counter Strike or Rocket League or something, and then like in between matches or when we're queuing up for Dota, I could just be like, all right, well, I'm gonna put these here, run the loop. It, it, it's very interesting how that works. And it's honestly, if like I'm watching YouTube or something, it's great. Yeah. It's fucking great for that. And uh, there's a hero that you can get to that even maximizes that because you don't get items until a loop starts. Oh, interesting. So there's not a risk of losing items or anything. It's just really, it's really cool. It's really unique approach to a game. And I, I really fucking dig it. I was actually playing some more today. All right. So I think we're through with the games. So let's get on to some news. Let's do it. I guess. Hit that news. Oh, and, right. and and Kate, news. So there was, Rockstar. There was somebody, oh, what? There's there's somebody who uh, he was super fed up because turns out GTA Online takes forever to load into. Like, 
GTA 5 already took forever and online just made those load times somehow worse, even though the game is fucking ancient. So a guy's like, you know what? I'm a technical person. Let me look at the request response of all this. Let me break this shit down. Let me make a patch to, so I will solve the loading issues for me. Fuck you, Rockstar. I can do a better job than you. So they did. And it turns out when loading the game, every single item that you can purchase in the, like the, the cash shop is fed to the game on startup. Oh, no. Like, yeah, it's not like, a, oh, the player asked for the store. We're going to load this. Like, literally a JSON blob of hundreds of hundreds of megabytes with every single fucking object in the game is loaded in at the start, and it takes just fucking forever. So someone said, nah, fuck that. They made a, they made a mod, they made a hack, uh, and their game loaded literal minutes faster. Uh, so Rockstar saw this, they saw the angry tweets, and they said, you know what? Fuck you, buddy. Uh, hey, we have this bug bounty program over here, and this clearly qualifies. So here's $10,000. Thank you. We're going to make an official patch. Wow. Oh, yeah. do you not know that's going on? Like, uh, how do you not profile your shit to see you're doing profiling, that? Profiling, testing. This is video game development, sir. I'm not sure if you've ever talked to anybody who actually works in the video game development industry. It is not software engineering. It is software shitting. I'm going to shit out this code. And if it looks like something that may or may not work, cool. Put it on a disc and ship it. We don't have time. There is no <laughs> testing. There is no profiling. If it works without crashing too often, it's good enough to ship. It's fucking absurd. I but, agree it's absurd. But that's that's the reality of game development. So, side note, side note. K fucking kudos to Rockstar. Like, goddamn. They see some guy ranting on Twitter talking about, well, I just modded the game because fuck those guys. And look, <laughs> now my load times are so much better. How could they be so incompetent? And Rockstar is like, you know what? Fuck you too, buddy. Here's 10K. It's like, oh, Thanks. okay. That was re that <laughs> was really cool. cool for them to, on their own, put him into the bug bounty. Yeah, yeah. Because they didn't have to do that. Like him explaining what goat went on, they could have just said, "Oh, he said that." Well, let's go. Oh, okay, there it is. Yeah. And just like fuck it. I but mean, then they, again, GTA Five prints fucking money, so them giving him ten K is really nothing. Yeah, well, and true. could you imagine like the absolute PR shitstorm of, oh, hey, this uh, this player figured out this issue with the game and uh, yeah, we they, they stole it from him. They just stole it. They gave Hold on. You, for it. you think that video game companies care about PR? No. Um, All right. All right. Some of them do, right? Like uh, to some extent, Rockstar still a little bit cares about its image. A little bit like i i know cd project red goes out of their way to not look like incompetent buffoons i said Do you say that until gta 6 comes out and then we realize oh fuck it's the entire industry yeah <laughs> so uh yeah yeah that's pretty nice. cool yeah and, uh, you like to see got it. 10k richer and now is saving hours upon hours of load times for gamers everywhere very He's cool a saint like to see it yeah so quick All aside, right. uh, question in the chat. How's the, how's the podcast going? Fellas, how would you rate your podcasting experience from on, 1 to 10? On a level of Dark Souls to Half-Life Alex, um, I'd say we're probably at about at a Metroid fusion. Does this scale um, go from good to great? Or what? Yeah, it goes from shit to uh, pretty good. I mean, it's no Bubsy 3D. That's but, very true. Yeah. I'm not I don't like, know. I'm pretty close to Bob D3D I'm not, because I forgot to turn on my fucking overhead light. Oh, that's fine, though. Your face is still visible. For now. For now. Thank God I'm West Coast. Like, I'm not going to remember this specific podcast in like 10 to 15 years. So I'm not going to say it's like. I am, now know. that you said that. <laughs> He's going to make it a point. He's going to set a reminder on his phone. Well, no, have you ever noticed you always remember things once you make some kind of uh, note about remembering it? Like, oh, I'll never remember this. I don't and then you ever remember anything I intend to remember like that. <laughs> oh, disregard that. 
I, I'd put this podcast. This one's at a Skyrim. Right, it's not my favorite game. Not even like an amazing RPG. But I had a great time with that. I had a great time with Skyrim. I look back fondly on Skyrim. Yeah. Right. This is so no. This is no Jazz and Ribs or... Festival get together, right? You know, we're yeah, not. Yeah, the, we're not at the sixteen bit bar- barcade, right? We're not. We're not having a grand oh, old God. time. But we don't um... hit that very often. <laughs> it's no UB, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I wasn't good there for that. Fuck off. That was actually God. during seventy two. Yeah, that was for my birthday. I remember that. You beat was great. I was already out west at that point. Um, why am I scoring? I'm not allowed to score. Tom scored. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, so it's the next one, Tom, because I can't read all of this, so you're gonna have to take it. Yeah, no, no. the The aside, the aside that I want to jump on is that uh, Renee was explaining something about Skyrim to me. I'm like, no, I know that. I've played Skyrim. And she's like, really? I said, yeah. I put in like 60 some hours on, on launch. And she started like not laughing, fucking guffawing. Like this was no chortle. This was no chuckle. This was no yuck yuck. This was straight up <laughs> guffaw. And she Out of said, the five <laughs> things you described there, I think two are words. <laughs> it was... It was, oh, you sweet summer child, let me tell you the meaning of time. Oh. She has 4,000 hours. Holy shit. That's a lot I of think, hours in Skyrim. I think I really want her to comment in chat on how many hours she has. Right now she's in Stardew, so, uh, yeah. yeah. How many hours in Stardew? Uh, t- hundreds, probably. She right now she's got mods to make the game bigger and longer and more complicated because she's at the point now where she can start start to speed run her way uh, into like a perfect self sufficient farm in less than uh, an in game year. So yeah, she needs things to make it harder. Uh, so she says, "Oh, I'm sorry, it's not thousands. It's it's almost two thousand. So 1,100 hours in OG Skyrim, and then in Skyrim Script Extender, which is the modded platform, it's 753. Okay, okay. that's why you got the almost 2,000. I was like, 1,100 is not almost 2,000 in any world. 1746 in Stardew. Jesus, fuck. I like Stardew. I really, really like Stardew. I think a lot of people like Stardew. Yeah. Oh, very short yeah. shout out i like this rocket league lobby we we're in these guys are cool yeah. yeah sorry she has uh 753 in skyrim special edition ah yeah what is that when they started putting it to toasters <laughs> that's when they said oh my god this game is so fucking broken you know what it needs a better water rendering like oh my god look at this fucking water dog <laughs> Holy shit, it's got ripples and shit. Yeah, we know it doesn't look nearly half as good as The Witcher 3, but it ripples now. Hey, the, those mods did make the game look a lot better. Oh, no. The mods yeah, are another the time, that was by giants. The mods yeah. are another world entirely. No, Skyrim Special Edition is, hey, let's package this game up again and relaunch it with virtually no changes whatsoever oh. and no bug fixes at all, and we're going to get another $60. Hmm. And uh, yeah, spoiler alert, they did. A lot of times, spoiler alert, a lot of people bought it. Yeah, yeah. Well, but enough with Skyrim. Let's talk Riot Games. Yeah, so uh, Riot Games uh, has investigated themselves and found that they have done nothing wrong. Oh, it's great how you know self evaluations can come out like that. Yeah. So the the board um, took a look at the misconduct allegations by the CEO and said, no, we're great. Literally have never done a thing wrong in our lives. Like that, that meme from rest of development where, where maybe it's like, I've never done a thing wrong in my life ever. And then the lawyer's like, I know this about you and that's why I love you. Yeah. That's exactly what happened here. So, uh, yeah. See. Uh, okay. Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium, the final cut, which is like uh, a new version of Disco Elysium with expanded voice acting and 
uh, a little bit more background in some of the quests. Uh, I'm actually waiting to go through this game until that comes out because I want the full, like, best, best version. Um, yeah, the, the Australian rating board, the, the Australian version of the ESRB, uh, has refused to classify the game, uh, citing, you know, hey, this, this isn't safe for children because there's drugs. And it talks about, like, adult topics and and things. I, oh, and there's a murder! Oh. The God. I think it's important to call out in case people don't know. Uh, Australia is notoriously stringent on video game censorship. They're a fucking nanny state when it comes to video games. So South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, and The Stick of Truth both have like crying koalas in the game describing the scenes in text that they can't legally show you thanks to the ratings board. Like it oh. is fucking stupid. GTA 5? That no issues but talking about really? you know yeah i mean why why would it have issues <laughs> it's a fine game about That's a catching, kid safe game yeah about catching criminals who grand theft autos yeah. um but uh no no you you make one one fucking adult game that has to do with like deep concepts and uh you know talking about hard hard problems and solving difficult crimes that have like really nasty uh, results for the victims and murder and nah, you can't, can't do that. Not safe for the kiddies. Even though, you know, even though it's not made for else. kids. <laughs> yeah. Do they yeah. not understand that video but, games but are video not video games for, are kids? for kids? So somebody yeah, described, uh, if you don't know what Disco Elysium is, I'm going to give you the, the quick, like, one to two sentence rundown. Somebody described it as imagine the next great American novel. And instead of a novel, it's a, it's an RPG. And that's what disco Elysium is. I've uh, heard it. I've it's heard it's movie. really good. Yeah. So I've, I've played a little bit, like a few hours. Um, and holy shit. I love everything about what I've, what I was playing. Uh, it is a point and click adventure game, but God damn Everything is voice acted. All the characters are interesting and memorable. It's got a super tight interconnected story. Like, fuck, man. And I, I got three hours into it. And I, I was able to pick that stuff up. So, yeah, we'll we'll see. Maybe you should right. finish it. Uh, I will, as soon as the special edition comes out. Which, uh, I, since I don't live in Australia, I'm going to be able to get that. Hey, nice. All right. uh, yeah. Still Next up, see what they do. Uh, let's see. A player does some math to figure out how to get the FIFA uh, Dream Team. I am how? gonna get kicked from this game. Uh, so okay. just letting you guys know because yep. no problem. I need to read this shit. So I read well, this. I, story. I need for the first I need, time. <laughs> I need I need the numbers here. Okay. All right. So I. Uh, EA, EA claimed, oh, you don't need to play for 22,000 hours or spend $100 million to get the team you want in our, our FIFA Dream Team, their, their gambling loot box card system. It doesn't work like that at all. You people are just being outlandish. So somebody said, fuck you, I can do the math. So uh, somebody has a Dream Team. It's a mere 100 million coin Dream Team. So this is achievable, according to EA. And here are the options. So, uh, assuming an average of 1,500 coins per game, accounting for weekly rewards, that's only 66,666 games. At an average of 20 minutes per game, that's a mere 22,000 hours of gameplay, or 916 days of gaming 24-7. Realistic! Um, by the way, this is also this is coming from Scuds TV on Twitter. I uh, wanted to give the, the credit and props there. Um, so for trades, assuming an average of 10,000 coins profit per trade and to make a mere 10,000 trades, assuming I can make 10K trades every 10 minutes, I will need to trade for 1,650 hours or 100, or uh, I'm sorry, or 69 days of straight trading 24 seven. Um, let's see here. You could also spend nearly 80,000 pounds on FIFA points. 
uh, instead of doing all that. So that's that's more realistic. Really. Eighty thousand pounds. Tom, you just made a save. I, I had to call it out. You just made a fucking save while reading all this. F eight. I got the clip. <laughs> Uh, so this guy rips EA even further and says, uh, encouraging your community to, to either spend huge amounts of time at a detriment to mental health or encouraging your community to spend an unethical amount of money at a detriment to financial health. If profits are your aim, congratulations, you win. Uh, however, if you have any compassion for your community, you will fuck yourself. I'm paraphrasing there. Um, <laughs> That is uh, nuts. Yeah, so when people talk about modern uh, EA sports games being just fucking casinos, yeah, that's what they're talking about. There is no realistic way to get what you want by just playing the game. Jesus. You're either spending an outlandish amount of money or an outlandish amount of time. I want to be clear, the FIFA stuff, that the dream team for FIFA, that exists in Madden, but that is not the mode that people typically do in Madden. FIFA uh, is a unique beast when it comes to that. Like, man, sure, people still do that. So I'm, but... I'm going to hard disagree with you there. And this is this is ANSA data, right? So Madden can't really speak to, but their NBA games, yeah, that's the only thing that makes some money according to their financials. So it's the FIFA I, Dream Team and then the NBA one. I don't think they make an NBA game anymore. Pretty sure. Like, I thought they... Stopped lives. Those were NBA lives. I thought they had something. Unless I was under a fucking hood. Or oh, it's my father is complaining about the wrong company when when my stepbrother wants another hundred dollars every week to <laughs> buy fucking cards. Okay, so that's my two K. Oh, you're talking. Uh, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a different game. That's uh, NBA two K. Yeah. Okay, that's that's 2K then. My bad. 2K can burn in hell too. Yeah, 2K took what... And what they did was even worse. They took a mode that people loved in the creative player and they microtransactioned that. There was no microtransactions when they first made it. And they made oh, it yeah. turned into a pay-to-play single-player experience even. Granted, yeah. there is a multiplayer thing too with it, which is even worse from pay-to-play, but... Yeah, they fucking shit on what used to be a really, really good basketball game experience. Yeah, so uh, fuck all this shit. You, you want to know why people stop? Uh, I can't even say that. Everybody buys the games. Nothing's going <laughs> to change. <laughs> the world loves soccer, and they don't do it to Madden. Not yet. It's, Give it time. Uh, it won't catch on in Madden. But people in don't. If you're still looking for those uh, sports games to play, including FIFA, and you want to get started on your 22,000 hours of grinding, good news, you don't have to buy the game now as long as you've got Xbox Game Pass because EA Play is now part of Xbox Games Pass. So we've talked about this in the past that it was going to be happening. Well, it's finally happened, and damn, it makes Game Pass that is the a best, game deal. Pass is such the a best deal. deal in gaming. Yeah, easily. Easily the best deal in gaming. Now, I know I just ripped on EA a lot, but let's consider the fact that Mirror's Edge is on there. Mirror's Edge is fucking fantastic. Uh, they've got the Dragon Age series on there, which is great. Mass Effect is amazing. Like, there's a lot of great shit that EA puts out. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Dead Space is theirs, too. Like, there's a lot of great stuff that's not just fucking laden with uh, microtransactions everywhere. Uh, and you and could... if, you've got, if you've got EA Play... Uh, yeah, get get to it. And you can you still play it. FIFA on there. Just to yeah. be clear, like the, the base game of FIFA is not the microtransaction shit. It's the dream team bullshit that people like. Yeah. That's the microtransaction. So that's there too. So just yeah. it's a great deal. Fucking do it. I think that's so all I've, I got I've got several that. several games to install now. Um I I really it's getting to be that the point in the year where I start replaying the Mass Effect games. Oh no! But because don't, they're remastering them, yep. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm waiting. I have the itch, man. Like I really, I really want to go do space opera stuff, but I'll be patient. I've never bit. played through them, and the remasters when I'm gonna do it. Yeah, they're they're great. 
I hope they clean up the, the controls in combat in one because Mass Effect 1 was a really great game, but it was right on the edge when, uh, when uh, Bioware was just figuring out, hey, we can build a shooter, you know? It doesn't have to be like this KOTOR-style RPG system for everything. Because Mass Effect 1 still felt like an RPG first, and then a really shitty shooter was layered on top of it. Playable, just not enjoyable. Yeah. Hoping they fix that up. Mass Effect 2 ran like goddamn butter, and Mass Effect 3 was somehow even more smooth. So, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of Bioware. They do good stuff. Yeah, like Andromeda. Ugh. Anyway. Um, Next-gen VR on PS5, they've got new controllers. Yup. Hey. So, um, I hope they would, given that the backstory <laughs> for their original controller was, you remember the PS Move? We have a lot of those controllers left. Can we work this into the VR system? Okay, so on one hand, it seems like really fucking lazy and cheap to try to force your goddamn off-brand Wiimotes to work in VR. But the fact that they work as well as they do, which it, it's not it's not great by any means, but the fact that they were able to make it work at all is kind of impressive. Like, yeah. you gotta give it to them. That was... That should not have worked as well as it did. I shit on the fact of how they decided that was their controller. Rather than finding an optimal controller, they're like, we already have these, let's use it. That yeah. said, that means that they designed those very well if that they're able to just translate. and Like, you know what? We can just use the mocap shit off of this, put it in VR, and bam, it worked. Yeah. Uh, I, but. That's one of the things I completely forgot about was PlayStation Move. <laughs> I, so did the yeah, world. I could have Everyone never. did. <laughs> so it was uh, a worse version of the Connect. Even upon mentioning it, I still barely remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you remember the eye toy? No. Wait, yes. is that the Game Boy thing? Nope. That was no. the webcam that you attached to your PS2. And uh, that you could no, do created that. characters based off of that in some I think it was a Rainbow Six game. You could play you a could soccer that. game like where it was falling on your head, and you'd be like, ah, ah, look, I headed the soccer ball. It's a great little mini game. Sounds awful. <laughs> I I never got into any of them other than the Wii. So like the Connect, I used the Connect at like a educational level and like doing uh, computer graphic shit with it, but never really played much Connect games. It was such a cool concept that turned out to be massively gimmicky. Yeah. Uh, that whole era of gaming was just massively gimmicky. Like everything, like all the fucking plastic controllers we had laying around, everything from, from Guitar Hero to tennis rackets that you slot your Wiimotes into. <laughs> like, I mean, gaming was just kind of, it's all about that plastic. But anyway. I don't, I don't want to call Guitar Hero gimmicky. It was that, gimmicky. I enjoyed the fuck out of it, but it was gimmicky. I mean, I guess you could technically say you wouldn't have needed a controller, but it would have been hard to play without a control. Like, playing that on an actual, like, Xbox or PlayStation controller would have been very difficult. Yeah. Strumming with a thumbstick, that is an easy way to fucking break your controller. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, I saw pictures of this controller... Um, they kind of, kind of look like the the Quest Two controller, honestly. Um, okay. Yeah, they they look cool. It looks like it was built from the ground up for VR stuff. Uh, and like Microsoft isn't really interested in console based VR. Uh, frankly, they don't really have to be as interested because you know they own the PC market. Um, but I'm really happy to see Sony still sticking with this. Uh, Sony has put a lot of money into building some really great VR games. Even though PSVR isn't nearly powerful enough to do what they really want it to do, it's still really cool that they're putting forth the money to making good software. Uh, and yeah, they're still committed. Uh, VR is not just a pipe dream for them, it looks like. They still have one of the VR experiences that I will never get to enjoy that I regret that I won't be able to, and that is Resident Evil VR. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Like, that is such a shame that that is locked to their... I get it. Like, they help fund it. So, by all means, that is your ecosystem. That's your baby. 
Fuck, I want to play that though. Somebody needs I mean, to mod like... the PC version to have VR support yeah. somehow. I kind of feel like there's a solution there. Like, what if, what if the the devs just said, "Hey, we're gonna unlock VR for PC, but every time you buy it, Sony gets a nickel." Right? Like, there's there's some profit sharing <laughs> well, that can happen there. And if I remember right, the PSVR version of it wasn't like the game; it was something else. Like it wasn't the full oh, was game. It, it was, uh, I, I, yeah, I, I don't think it may have been the full game, but I didn't think it was. I thought it was like a different side thing built into the engine. I could be oh, wrong though. Whole thing. Uh, but either way, yeah, it's. I, I'm happy to see Sony still in there. Um, hell, if if anyone from from Sony corporate is listening, look, you can make the VR for Resident Evil Seven on PC paid DLC, and you get all that profit, like. I'll buy it. I'm in. Let's I'll just go. It. That was a good game. I would finally get for, RE7. For yeah. I literally the whole reason I never played RE7 is because I was waiting to see if the the VR was yeah. exclusive. Because I really wanted to play it in VR. Mm-hmm. I didn't want my first time of the game being on a fucking pancake screen. <laughs> Dude, you say that, and I I always bring this up, but damn, that fucking demo got me. <laughs> like it, it was like better than Phasmophobia even got me initially oh you mean like as far as anxiety like, and just okay like the way they set it up tension and stuff okay yeah well so well done like resident evil is first person i never would have thought of it but dear god it worked it really worked yeah i was i was impressed with it i wouldn't say the whole game was amazing but most of it was was really good didn't you say it eventually kind of did the thing that most resident evils do and at the end it turned into just an action game Sort of, yeah. Can uh, I know but I it's keep... worth it just for the first like third or half or whatever. I know I keep bringing this up, but I feel like it's important. Can I get a fuck Konami for killing PT? Yeah, yeah, that yep. would have been such a fucking. At uh... least though, there are, have been some games to come out that have used that as a major influence. So I'm I'm glad that it at least made the. You know, impact that it did to where it's influencing a lot of games going forward. But yeah, I would have yeah. really, really loved to see what they ended up doing with with the Silent Hill game. And I mean, that was just kind of break, or I want to say groundbreaking. But like to have a game that small, that dense. Yeah. Like it, it, it's literally the design doc for PT. You open it up and it says. How to make game that survives internet for up to two weeks. Yeah. And it and did. How to make game in areas smaller than a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> or how wow. to be unsettling 101. Like yeah. even little things in PT, right? Like the radio announcer talking about like some father brutally murdering his family. Like, okay whatever we've seen this shit but then the guy says and the mother tried calling 911 it's like whoa hold on there buddy that, that's I not think, how we speak <laughs> no one says that I, I take objection to that like hearing about a grizzly murder whatever standard horror game trope saying 911 instead of 911 okay the real shit has started one <laughs> well, like the uncanny things that have like some of the way the room moves around or mm-hmm. not room, but things move. Yeah. And then the mirror. Oh, fuck that whole mirror. Even just the first, and a lot of it was because at the time that was like really, really, really almost photorealistic mm-hmm. as far as graphically, but just the yeah. first loop around where Lisa's just standing at the end of the hallway and the lighting was so good. Like that part was like, oh, n- yeah, nope, nope, not going down there. Nope. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> uh, and I then, of course, life. yeah. I hated it. And of course, um, the discovery that, you know, at that part of the game, she is always behind you. Always. Yes. Such a creepy thing. <laughs> That's, um, yeah, not a fan of that. Always right behind you, breathing down your neck, <laughs> he- head violently shaking around unnaturally yep nope not 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 a fan of that (laughs) 
hard pass to the point where you hard absolutely pass. want a game that does it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, enough of PT. I, I feel it's like a monthly yeah. we have to talk about PT. It's just, oh my God. There, there are so many great things that could have happened with Kojima branching out from Metal Gear, but uh, fuck Konami, man. Also note, we're talking about a tech demo, effectively, that yeah. was created two console generations ago. Yeah. Like, I want to put some time to this. Like, there's members of our community that if we just openly start talking PT, like, they have no fuck clue what we're talking about. Like, this is not a... This is old. But it's still, like... Yeah. Left us wanting it to happen, and it never did. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I'm i really interesting, interested to see, because I've, I've been thinking about this since playing Death Stranding and watching a lot of retrospectives on the Metal Gear franchise recently, but I'm really interested to see what uh, Kojima does next, because theoretically... Um, Death Stranding sold well enough that he can do another project. So, yeah. Is it going to be just as batshit insane when it comes to story? It's Kojima, yes. Mm -hmm. Probably, it, but it'll be cinematic. It'll be super cinematic. Do you ever play the, the Metal Gear game, Zerk? Nope. Okay, yeah. yeah. See, Adam and I knew what we were in for. Because, like, we've played through all the Metal Gear games. Like, we, we knew what we were walking into. Most of them, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just remember going into this, I just said, we might be biting off more than we think. Just yeah. because we've never had him unchained. Yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for you this week. It was, it was a bit of a long one. For not playing any new games, we somehow made a cast last two fucking hours. Oh, Tom played a couple games. Tom anyway. Tom for all of you watching us live on twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector, because you are here at 9 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Pacific time, thank you very much. We hope you enjoy being in the chat and in the game with us, as other people would enjoy, so you should always try. Anyway, we do have a YouTube is the word I'm looking for. 72 pin connector in all of our podcasts get put up there. You go check it out sometime while Tom shows you his Game Boy. We also have a website, 72pickconnector.com. There, you'll find our merch store. You'll find our logos and everything you use to put all over the fucking place. But also, you'll find a link to the Discord. And that's the important part, because our community is awesome. And you should come hang out, because there's a lot of really fucking cool people, including the Rocket League team, whom we'd be a sin if we didn't discuss about what happened for RLCS. Um, they made it through the uh, round robin stage. Uh, we went one and three, but we made it through to the knockout stage where we fell to, oh my God, I almost blanked, Charlotte Phoenix in the first round of the knockout phase. So made it to knockout stage. It was a good fucking showing. Shame we didn't make it further, but good job, guys. Proud of you. Did good. Ready for the next split. And with that, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. Unless you guys got anything you want to add. Game Boy. Carne Game Asada. Ah, uh, fucking jerky. Yee. Anyway. Till next week, everyone. Damn bats. Game on. Bye.